What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian. Zachary Levi. Zachary Levi say, you know what? And the truth shall set you free! <laughs> you know, when you get sometimes you say F it, it usually doesn't go anywhere, uh, doesn't go well, but this time he said, hey, what harm could it do? Everybody else is doing it. Let me do it, too. Let me join in on the fun and on the truth. Not on the fun, on the truth. You can't handle the truth. We've been putting the pieces together for how long? Go back. A year before, over a year before Black Adam came out. We knew this was a disaster. We knew what was the point of bringing in Superman because everybody in that test screen that saw this movie said the same thing we said after we saw it. This is whack. I much rather let it go and move on, let him go with his career let's see what happens with his career brian i don't know brian i think people are, are getting a bit tired of all of this and the mediocre films that he makes Pablo's rant of course is talking about dwayne johnson and and black adam and shazam so we always start with the numbers man we we we, we, we bring you the facts because you can't fight the facts and then we give you the analysis shazam bomb fact Movie's gonna lose money. Fact. Opening weekend, thirty million dollars was down from fifty-three million for the first film. Global was sixty-five. Budget is a hundred million dollars. You know, plus marketing one fifty. They need to get to three hundred million global, which is just below what the first film did. No chance. This film won't get close. These are matters of undeniable fact. Why this is especially damning is that March has really been sequel month at the box office. Creed 3, killing yeah. it. Record box for wow. the Rocky franchise. Yeah, that's Scream crazy. 6, record box for the Scream franchise. John Wick 4, tracking to record opening for that franchise. Yeah. But in the middle, Shazam bombs as a superhero sequel. Another superhero sequel that goes by the wayside. And we talked about this franchise. I feel sorry for them. Because it's yeah. felt like they've just get they're getting kicked from every direction and cast aside. They're not part of the new DCU. And it's kind of come to a head. Because as we know, this movie was supposed to have Dwayne Johnson in it. That was the original the original plan as confirmed by the cast and director. Yeah was that Shazam 1 was supposed to end with a stinger for Black Adam, leading into the classic comic book conversation between Shazam and Black Adam in Shazam 2. And it did not happen for one reason, which is Dwayne Johnson flexed his enormous muscles and said, it's not gonna happen on my watch because I'm too big, I'm too good for your franchise, and I'm too big and I'm too good for what the comics have laid down for this character, I'm gonna go make Black Adam the center of my DC universe and have him fight Superman and have him fight the Justice League and have everything revolve around me, which is always how he does it. You ain't bad, you ain't nothing! You ain't nothing! And Karma's a B, man, because his movie bombed. You know, he took out Shazam with it. And now you see something that is not all that common which is first the fans came for him and now the insiders are coming for him. Yeah, he stood up at the Oscars in his pink suit or whatever and said, you know, a couple of critics didn't like my movie, but the fans loved it, so we put our best foot forward. Yeah, whatever. But you got Zachary Levi and David Samberg, the director and the star of this movie, throwing him under the, the bus. bus for killing their <laughs> film. That you do not see every day in Hollywood. So to your not point, to The Rock. No. <laughs> to your point, fans were criticizing The Rock on social yeah. about tanking this franchise, and Zachary Levi reposted one of the treat that one of the rants yeah. and said, "Quote: The truth shall set you free." Stamp of approval. <laughs> right at Dwayne Johnson. What do you think he's thinking now? I mean, The Rock doesn't care. Yeah. You know, the rock, as I said, we talk about these megastars live in a different world. And The Rock's world is one of yes people. 
He's not yeah. surrounded by anyone who gives him legitimate feedback and he doesn't want to be coached. He doesn't want to be directed. Yeah. yeah. So no, he, he is not losing any sleep over it and he's certainly counting his money just fine. I won't even notice. But Brian, what if this translate in, translates into future box office? So what it did do that he did not want and did not ever conceive of is it closed the genre to him for good. Yes. That's what did happen. Because between Super Pets and Black Adam and now this fallout related to Henry Cavill and the end of the Shazam franchise. He's done. I don't think Marvel's touching him. Hell no. I don't honor Bob Iger. I, I think he's radioactive when it comes to comic book superhero films. So that is actually a loss for his brand and box office potential. There's no question. And he, in his mind, was already set to be on to Black Adam 2 and on to Justice Society spinoffs. And he had all that mapped out. Yeah. So that is a real L for him. And he's not used to having other people in Hollywood publicly stand up to him and basically rain on his perfect boy image that he likes to portray. This also has a potential, Brian, to affect... Because right now we've seen sort of the pendulum shift from superhero films to regular old films. And these movies being well made and stories being exciting, whatever. Right? So superheroes is out of favor right now. And Rock is not doing superhero films, but he's going to do these regular films, his films, the movies that he does. If those movies bomb in this sort of era of regular movies... I don't know how he recovers from this unless he decides himself that he wants to work with somebody and actually actually work with somebody and collaborate um, instead of him calling the shots. I don't know if he can do that, um, but his career, Brian, or his uh, longevity in this uh, or success um, in the film industry is, is in jeopardy because of it. Yeah, I agree. Look, I mean, Hollywood at the end of the day, like it is a bizarre animal but one thing that is consistent is if you don't deliver profits show me the money show me the money your compensation gets cut and right now the rock is the most expensive hire yeah. in hollywood in terms of upfront money plus back end plus the amount of control that you have to give him for a production he does not live in a world of 50 million dollar budgets yeah and so you know you start looking around and you're like well Maybe you can blame Jungle Cruise on the pandemic, but Disney lost over $100 million on that. Yeah. Black Adam, I estimate they lost about $100 million on that. You know, I mean, it happened to Stallone. It happened to Schwarzenegger. It happened to every action star we've ever had for the, that I can think of, really. On, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I guess you could say if you count Keanu, maybe he's the one who's defied it, but he, I don't know if he's a classic action star. It happened to Bruce Willis, obviously. Um, so... It's happening in The Rock. At some point, the demand for him will go down yeah. if the people aren't coming to the box office to see him. Yeah. That's it. And like, what is mind boggling, but actually very fitting is now you just look at, you look at the carnage in his wake, right? We know with a high profile divorce <laughs> from the Fast and Furious franchise. Oh yeah. Now a very high profile mess leaving the superhero genre. These are really bankable enterprises that he's just kind of the rock blowing only, himself yeah. out of. There's no one else that's doing it. He's doing it to himself. The Rock can only work with The Rock. And he can only be The Rock in movies, apparently. Sadly. We told you so already. This news isn't uh, news to us. It's just more like confirmation. So David Sandberg doubled so that's a, the weird thing is so yeah. Zach, levi levi puts this thing out then sandberg comes out and crushes the rock because he basically is like we had in both shazam movies so he said in shazam one they shot that silly cafeteria stinger with mm -hmm. superman where mm -hmm. you don't see his face mm -hmm. and his head and he said i was promised henry cavill when i shot it Ooh. so i shot it this way with the understanding that then Cavill would come in and they would pick up the shot and that, and he's like, at the 11th hour, they pulled the rug on me. And so I had to go with the final version being what I originally shot, which is no head and no face. Yeah, yeah. Then he said in the second one, 
He was supposed, and we know also that Dwayne Johnson killed the other stinger for that movie, which was the Black Adam intro. In the second movie, he said, I was supposed to get Justice Society recruiting. Stinger. And Dwayne Johnson killed and that. It's like by name. He calls him out by name. He said he killed it. Not the studio. But Brian, he killed but, but Brian, how does the studio give him that sort of power? He doesn't, as you said before, we own the rights, not you. How does he have that power to say no? Well, again, we're seeing the movie now, but obviously this movie was shot and produced 12, 18 months ago. So mm -hmm. obviously at that moment in time, the organization the was studio was organized. thinking Super Pets and Black Adam were going to be massive franchise starters. They were believers mm -hmm. in the Dwayne Johnson hype machine. Got it. But now we see the output and because it's gone bad, I just think it's fascinating that star and director are just not filtering and holding back and covering for this behind the scenes debacle. Yeah. 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 I mean, especially knowing what transpired and who's at fault, clearly. Um, but we're never gonna, uh, it'll be interesting, Brian, if The Rock continues to have to answer some of these questions. You know what I'm saying? It'll be interesting that if he has to continue, because if when it doesn't, if, I was gonna say, when was the last time he made a legitimately good movie? That, and I'm not count, I'm not counting Fast and Furious movies. Like, do you count Jumanji as his? That's no. probably the close. That's a mega hit. That's probably no. the closest thing to it. No. But like, when's the last time that like he actually like the rundown? That was pretty good. I like the rundown. That's a long time ago though. That's almost twenty years ago. I like Walking Tall. I like Gridiron Gang. Those are all in that same era. Yeah. Those are all when The Rock is not quite in charge. The mega, yeah, force in Hollywood yet says something. Yeah, man. Um, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, but I feel bad. I mean, I feel bad for Shazam. I mean, like, I, it's not something that I ever thought was that great, but I feel bad for them. I mean, they really were the collateral damage on so many fronts to this whole transition and fallout. And, you know, the, the, the shame of it is the Rocco, his spin on the whole thing, as, as we found out last fall, was he did this for the fans. He did this for the Black Adam character who deserves so much more. Bullshit, Mr. Handman. The fan take is basically you torpedo two franchises at once by doing that. And that'll be the legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Sazam? I did. Really? What did you... I got to hear your thoughts. I it didn't is, see it. Yeah, you know, so... It's not horrible. Okay. But it's in that book it's in that boat of what we've discussed which is if this movie comes out five or six years ago i don't think it's a flop i think it's fine i don't think it's awesome i don't think it's horrible i think the critical reviews are probably maybe 10 to 15 points higher than than they're getting right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think the box office would have been at least what the first one was i think this is the classic case of kind of more of the same doesn't get you anywhere yeah and people are just sort of tired of it. Mm -hmm. And I think to Zachary Levi's point, if I was to validate one thing he did say is they made it as like a family friendly film because of his his family that's empowered. Yes. But the marketing really didn't push that angle as much. And yeah. so the kids aren't coming out for it. Got it. And Makes I think sense. that's telling at a time where there really isn't a big animated movie out. There really isn't a lot of kids programming. Yeah, yeah. So I do think they that this one is kind of like, I would kind of say it's it's not as good as the first one, but it's not light years worse. It's just that we're in a different climate for this type of film where this just doesn't cut it anymore. And there's other good movies. I mean, I saw Creed 3. I really liked that. I can't wait to see John Wick 4. Like, it's coming out at a time where there's other films that people are going to see and liking. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to see Shazam. I, you don't need to. Because <laughs> the thing is, you know it doesn't go in. That's the other thing. You know it doesn't go anywhere. You know it ends here before you go see it. Because yeah. the DCU is moving on. And there's really nothing for you to... That is another take, Brian. Is it 
does it fall under the sort of list of movies that don't will perhaps maybe or maybe not because we were unsure of what the connection of Shazam would be to the DCU. But was there a possibility of fans not caring about this film because of not knowing where this film lies in that in the future of the DCU or, or they didn't care? Yeah, I definitely think there's an element of that. And that's why I say that, like, had Dwayne Johnson played ball and had this been Black Adam versus Shazam, I think the movie would have oh, succeeded. Oh, I, think, I think that movie would have made money in a way that neither of the individual films did. And so I think that really did prove to be a a factor. Um, and, and to be fair, like, you know, James Gunn wasn't tweeting about this film, right? They, they weren't owning, they, they wanted to kind of discard it. So they were kind of telling you don't see it. I will say something kind of controversial, but I think I thought about this after I saw it. If I was David Zasloff, I would have sent this to streaming. I wouldn't have even shown it. Because they're trying to put together Max, that combined app. And I do think there is a base that would be interested to see this film. And I and I go back to, this is gonna be a weird analogy, but if you guys remember the Divergent series that was like the ripoff of the Hunger Games yes. that Shailene Woodley was in. Yes. That last film in the series never made it to the theater because the demand was falling off so much along the way. Mm -hmm. They sent it straight to streaming and TV. And I just was like, they could have read the tea leaves because all the box office signs were that this movie was not gonna make it. Yeah. And I just was like, could you have cut the marketing and just said, we're putting it on HBO sure. Max or Max mm -hmm. and, and made, made a little buzz that way. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Um, we told you already what was happening. This is no surprise to us. The truth is just being solidified. And uh, what will be of The Rock in his future making movies? Are people going to come out and support his movies? If it's whack? If we... if Because he... Uh, there's nobody that can tell me that any of his movies were like the dopest they've ever seen. You know? And... I remember a lot of Sylvester Stallone movies. I remember a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. The Rock doesn't fall in that category, man. He's not in that. For me, if there was a Hall of Fame, I couldn't give it to him. I just couldn't. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Jamie Report. Man, you come right out of a comic book.